Hello, this is Photography Gamer. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you to everyone who watched the previous episode on Days Gone. In today's episode, I'll be looking at the photo mode in Red Dead Redemption 2 and Red Dead Online. I'll be breaking down the game's photo mode functionality and also showing you a few other creative ways you can take pictures in the game. Following this, I'll focus on this episode's special topic, which is black and white photography where I'll demonstrate how to create atmospheric and dynamic black and white shots using Red Dead 2. Finally, I'll conclude the episode with some questions I've received from the virtual photography community on the black and white medium. Okay, so Red Dead 2's photo modes. Well, they have a few. There's a, a traditional photo mode, there's a traditional type of retro camera, there's an advanced camera, and there's various other methods to take photos. Generally, they're pretty good. None of them particularly are spectacular, but there's so many options here, it's, it's quite in-depth for a virtual photographer. So first I'm going to go through the photo mode, which is like the photo modes in other games where you can freeze time. So to access this one, you need to go to the pause menu and then press the touchpad. So firstly, you've got Orbit or FreeCam. Now the difference between Orbit and FreeCam is it just changes the functionality of the L2 and R2 buttons. In the Orbit camera, if you use L2 and R2, it will zoom in and it will zoom out. If you use the L2 and R2 on the free camera, it will adjust the height, so it's like craning. Basically, Orbit is kind of locked to the subject, so you will rotate around the subject. The free camera allows you to move the camera freely throughout the environment. Okay, so if you are doing an edit, but you're not happy with it, you can click R3 and that will reset the image. If you use the D-pad up and down, that will adjust the lens. So that is like an artificial type zoom. So you can zoom in and zoom out. If you don't want to use the joysticks or the triggers, depending on whether you're using orbit or free. If you want to roll the image, you can use the D-pad left and right. Rolling kind of tilts the image one way or the other. However, the tilting, the roll isn't full. You can't go like full all the way around. You can only go a very small degree which is kind of disappointing. For me, I use roll for like dynamic movement, action, surrealism. If you want to give some, if it's an action combat scene, like you're having a punch up in one of the saloons and you want to make that image feel like it's in motion, give it a kind of a roll to one side or the other and it will feel more dynamic. Okay, so that's the basic functions. If you press R1, you will go into the advanced ones. Firstly, we have focus distance. So you can use the left joystick up and down and that will dictate where the line of focus will be. So that's, so think of it, if you've got five people standing in front of you, like, like a domino effect, as you move the joystick, the first one will be in focus, the second one, the third, the fourth, the fifth. So it's like a, a moving sense of focus. Then you have blur strength. Now blur strength dictates how much is in focus. So if you had those five people there, you could get them all in focus or you could just have one. It depends how deep you want the focus or how shallow. And you use the right stick up and down for that. Then we have exposure. So you use the D-pad up and down to alter that. You can lock it with R right on the D-pad. The exposure is very important when you're dealing with black and white photography because it kind of will help you adjust it. The game doesn't have a great deg degree of like post-processing in terms of light and dark. It doesn't have a brightness adjustment. You just have exposure. But that's good if you want to just, if you've got a blown out image where the sunlight is way too bright, just lower the exposure. Vice versa, if it's too dark, bump it up. Then if you press R1, you will go into the effects menu. So first we have contrast. You can use the right stick up and down to adjust contrast. The higher the contrast, the more bold the difference between the shades will be, the lights and the darks. And it will just kind of, if it's a color image, it will kind of get distorted the higher you go. Contrast with black and white, you can go higher up and it won't have as much of a negative impact. You can also go down with contrast, which creates a kind of a cloudy image and it kind of makes the image less defined. So you can use that sometimes if you want to create a kind of a retro type feel, like an old photography type feel. That's an interesting thing to play with. Then you have filter intensity. You can use the D-pad up and down to change this. 
But in order to do that, you need a filter. So next is filters. So you can use left and right on the D-pad and there are a lot of filters here and they're quite interesting. A lot of them add grain, a lot of them add a vignette to the image. Unfortunately, you can't alter the vignette independently. It's there or it isn't. So there's a lot of nice filters here. So I would experiment with them all, but if, if you've got a filter, you like it, but it's a little bit too strong, go to back to the filter intensity and just drop it down a couple of notches until you have the nice balance, depending on what you want to add to it. Think of it like split toning or adding filters in Instagram. Sometimes you don't want the 100%, you just want to drop it down a little bit just to make it have a nice balance. Okay, all of those menus, like whether it's Orbit or Free or the other ones, you've got certain functions that are always there. So you have the HUD. If you want to get rid of the HUD and do a screenshot, you can press triangle and the HUD will disappear. If you would like to save your photograph, you can press X and it will save that image in your gallery. To view them, press square and that will take you through to all the pictures you've saved. And if you press circle, you will go back and come out of the photo mode. So that's the standard photo mode. Next, we have the retro camera one, which is a traditional camera from the kind of era when the game is set. So this is more akin to traditional real life photography. So using this camera is, is very much like you would use a camera in real life with a few differences. To access this camera, you hold down L1, then you press R1 to access your item wheel. Go to the one on the right where your binoculars are and press R2 over that to access the camera. You can freely walk around with the camera in your hand, but once you raise the camera up, you cannot move it because it will be set on a tripod because that's what they used in that era. So you have two distinct options. You have handheld and you have self-portrait. To do a handheld shot, press L2 and it will lift the camera up as if you're holding it in front of your eye. You can press R2 to take the shot. L1 enables a focus lock. So the focus is a bit, a bit strange on this one. You have to kind of move it around until you get the focus on the object you're looking at. Once you've got that, L1 to lock it because it will auto focus and move around. It's quite annoying. You can use the left analog stick to zoom in and zoom out, which is good for recompositioning the image. You can press triangle to view your photos and again, press circle to go back. Then you have R3, which takes you into the self portrait mode. Now self portraits, basically when you're walking around, if you press R3, it will position the camera directly in front of where your character is facing and it will face you. So if you're by a river, and you want to do a self-portrait, don't look at the river and press R3 because it will take a picture of the riverbank. Look at the riverbank with the river behind you, press R3 and then the camera will appear on the elevated part of the bank. That's another thing to consider, elevation. Where you are standing, the camera will be directly in front of you. So if it's lower, it will be a low to high shot. If it's higher, it will be high to low. R2 takes the shot. L1 is enable focus. Again, enable the focus lock. The L stick is for zoom again. The R stick moves the camera angle. If you press up and down, it will change your character's expression. Now there's not a great deal of difference between the expressions. It's not very expressive. For me, I use the pose, which is left and right on the D-pad. So you can fold your arms, crouch down, a few other options. And again, triangle is to view all your photos and circle is to go back. Now I've done a considerable amount of uh, photo tutorials on the Red Dead traditional camera. If you would like to watch those, I'll put a link at the end of the episode. It's called the Red Dead Photo Diaries. This camera really, it's like using a camera in real life. If you're not good at photography in real life, you might find this a struggle because time does not stop. Everything continues to move. So you've got to kind of consider the world is continuing around you. So you've got to adjust place your camera sometimes you'll have to wait for the right moment sometimes you have to come back when the light is correct but if you want a really comprehensive guide just to using that camera in the Red Dead universe check out the link at the end of this video and there's, there's a whole host of them there okay so the third camera option is the advanced camera available exclusively to Red Dead online players to unlock this camera, you need to take on the naturalist role, then press right on the D-pad to view your in-game catalog. Go to the hunting and fishing section and turn the page to find the advanced camera. Now, this camera isn't free. You have to buy it using in-game currency and at present it costs $540 or 22 gold. Personally, I think that's a little bit steep considering it doesn't add a great deal, but anyway, 
What can you do with the advanced camera? Well, L2 is for handheld shots. The difference being this time is you can move your feet around. So you're not stuck in the mud, so to speak. You're not on a tripod. You can hold the camera up and you can walk around until you've found the camera position and until you want to take the shot. So that's an advantage. If you press R3, you will do self portraits. Now you can't move around doing a self portrait, which is annoying, but you know, it'd be nice if you could move your character. If you press R1, you can switch between poses and filters menus. So you have filters again. Now, I don't know why, but there aren't as many filters here as there are in the main photo mode. You have a very minimal choice and it's quite disappointing. You can alter the filter intensity if you just want to have a little tint of it. You have poses again, as we went through before, but it seems like there's fewer options. Maybe I'm imagining it. And then you've got the expressions again, which aren't particularly great anyway. If you want to take a photograph you press X, if you want to view them press triangle and if you want to put the camera away you can press circle. So I don't think that's a great addition if you're paying $540 in the game or 22 gold to get that really all you're getting is the ability to move your feet in a handheld shot and you're getting a few filters and that really is the difference which seems a little bit stingy if you ask me. So they're the three main modes, but there are other ways to take pictures. So firstly, you've got no HUD. So no HUD, think of it like the photo mode, but without the photo interface. It's like doing the handheld shot, but you can actually just do a screenshot of it. To do this, just go to your settings, go to display and put no HUD. You know, just turn all the HUD elements off. Then when you go into the game, press the touchpad until you go into first person view. And basically what you've got there is a completely empty frame of any HUD elements and you've got a nice wide view of the landscape. So it's a walk around and then you can frame it as if you were the camera. So, so if you're playing Red Dead 2 story mode and you want to take wide angled shots, but you find the main camera annoying because you can't move your feet when it's in, in there, try this. This is also good if you want to do still video shots. So I quite like the no HUD option. The other option is the cinematic camera, which can be accessed via holding down the touchpad for a few seconds. Basically black borders will appear and you can move within the frame to find a nice position to take a shot. You can also use the analog stick to move the camera, but be aware the camera angle switches after about 10 seconds. So you've got to be quick, but it's a, it's a kind of a nice atmospheric cinematic feel if you want to do like a bordered cinematic shot. Okay, so that is pretty much all of the Red Dead 2 photo mode options. It is a beautifully detailed game and it has really good lighting, so it makes virtual photography really easy to take good shots in this game. You know, the standard mode, the retro camera, the advanced version of that, the for the online game, no HUD, cinematic. You've got plenty of options there. There's a lot of options, so there's always a way to take a photo. But it isn't perfect, you know, more color grading options would have been nice. There's no saturation or vibrancy sliders, no standalone vignette option. Although you do get vignettes on some of the filters. No standalone grain option. The advanced camera for online really isn't good enough. And there's no time of day option either. So there's a great deal of things they didn't put in here. So it's not perfect, but when you consider the volume of options you've got there, the volume kind of makes up for the lack of the, the detail. So it's good, it's not the best, but I'd give it like a nine out of 10 overall. When you factor in all of those different elements, there's plenty there to get your teeth into. Okay, so that's Red Dead 2's photo mode. Now for the special topic of the episode, black and white photography. So what is black and white photography? Well, obviously you desaturate an image, then there aren't any colors, you're just dealing with shades of white and black, hence it's black and white photography. So how do you create a black and white shot? Well, first thing you need to do is desaturate the image. So if there is a saturation slider, do that. Red Dead 2 does not have that. So how do you do black and white shots in Red Dead 2? Well, you are constricted to the filters. So the best filter that really is true black and white is a filter called Noir and you need to assign the noir filter to 100% and then you use the contrast and the exposure functions to manipulate the image to get a nice balance between the lights and the darks. But what is the point of black and white photography? What does it do? 
Well, one of the first things it does, and one of the first reasons it's very appealing is because it simplifies the editing process. You don't have to deal with color. You don't have to worry about colors getting burnt out or distorted when you raise contrast, because when you raise contrast, a lot of the colors get very weird. When you have a black and white image, the colors are still impacted, but they're all shades of gray, shades of black, shades of white. So having an image in black and white gives you a vast amount of leeway in terms of processing a more contrasty dynamic image. So you can go lighter with the light areas and darker with the dark areas. So they're really images that you can really go quite extreme on the contrast between the light and the dark areas, thus creating a really powerful image that stands out. So when should you use black and white? Well, for me, I use it with images that have clean edges or well-defined things in the frame. So it doesn't have to be black and white in the image, but they, like a dark blue and a light cream color next to each other would stand out. So you have to look at an image and think, what's light, what's dark? Will it work well if you take the color out and then you really rip up the contrast higher, then the light and the dark areas will have more distance between each other in terms of the settings. Like trees, for example, tree branches. If you have an eerie tree branch and the sky, that will really stand out in black and white. Silhouettes will stand out. Characters with, like my character in Red Dead you're looking at at the moment has a black and white outfit on deliberately because I wanted to demonstrate what that's like. So black waistcoat, white shirt, black tie, pale skin tone, dark beard, dark hair, you can see how that's going to stand out because you've got immediately you've got contrast, but it doesn't have to be black and white in the color image. You can just be different shades of different colors that have differentials. If you've got an image where everything is kind of the same shade, black and white is going to be tricky because you won't really be able to accentuate the difference as much. So for me, I use it when I see clear differences between the light and the dark within the color image. So unfortunately in this game, in Red Dead, you can't like just take pictures in black and white. Like it would be really good if you could have a black and white setting on the camera and walk around seeing things in black and white because I, I did that in real life when I was into photography at the beginning and it really helped because when you hold the viewfinder up or when you look at the screen and you're looking at the world in black and white, you very quickly start to see the difference between what looks good in black and white and what doesn't stand out. So it's all about making things bolder and stand out and you can be more extreme with the edit bolder with contrast, bold in a way you can't be with color because color is more sensitive to changes of contrast and exposure. And colors get oversaturated and look very weird when you really go too high. But when you take those colors out, black and white allows you to really play around with editing to a much a vast degree. And it's also less stressful. A lot of photographers do black and white photography. I'll be honest, a lot of them do it because it saves them time and it's less painful because you don't have to worry about color management. Color management's a big aspect of photos. You take the color element out, oh my God, it's so much easier. You just, you don't have to worry about that crap at all. You just deal with two tones, white and black, and the contrast between them. So quick, so easy. So I'm not saying every photographer who does black and white is lazy. I was when I was doing it, but you know, it's, it's a good way if you want to do volume and it's a uniform edit style, so you can kind of get into a black and white mindset. So give it a try in Red Dead, give it a try in real life. Okay, we're nearly done. I just have a few questions to answer on black and white photography. Thank you to everyone who sent them in to me. Um, first question, have you got any tips for black and white editing? Well, as I said before, you can really experiment more. Contrast, light, darks, black, whites, brightness even, increase clarity, increase sharpness, add some grain. But you've really, with the edit, you've got more freedom to really go a bit more bolder with the differential between light and dark areas. Don't be afraid of it. Color, it's different, but with black and white, you've really got more ex room to experiment. So be a lot more bolder and see how it looks and experiment. Next question, what's the best way to create a black and white silhouette? Well, silhouettes, the, for me, the best way, you can try this in real life. If you've got a bedroom and a hallway, and it's nighttime, turn the light off in the bedroom, turn the light on in the hallway, get someone to stand in the doorway and you sit in the room that's dark. Hold a camera up, what have you got? A silhouette, because you've got a very dark area, you've got a very light area, and you've got an archway, which is kind of like a bridge between the two. Something stands in that bridge, what happens? One side of them is light, one is dark. If you're standing on the side where the shadow originates, then guess what, it's gonna be a silhouette. So the best way to create silhouettes is look for where the light source is 
and where you are and where the subject is. So it's like a line. You want the light source in the distance, you want to be here and you want the subject standing right between you and the light. Then you'll get a silhouette type image. You won't get a perfect one. If you're dealing with like tunnels, tunnels are great because they, they kind of enclose the light. They're very easy for silhouettes. You can do silhouettes in other ways, but you need the strong light source and ideally like a light and a shadow differential. Third question, what things should I look out for when taking a black and white shot? Well, you just look out for the difference between light and dark shades. Like I said before, trees, silhouettes, um, anything that's too, like if you take a picture of tr trees that have got a lot of leaves on, uh, as a black and white image, it usually doesn't stand out because it's too busy. Black and white images usually are at their best, I find, when they're simple. You've got like light and dark elements, take the color out, rip up contrast, exposure, add a bit of grain, vignetting, and you have a really bold image that just jumps off of the page at you a lot more than it would in any other way. Fourth question, do black and white shots have to be high contrast? No, they don't. You can, like I said before, take the contrast lower. When you go lower, it looks very gray and cloudy. Now, make it gray and cloudy, add a bit of grain, add a bit of clarity, play around with it and you'll look it will look like a photo that was taken in the old days like when the cameras first came out because they weren't sharp and crystallized like they are today i don't really use that much unless i want to create a vintage retro feel but you can go down on contrast as well as up okay final question how can i get better at black and white photography practice makes perfect and also just understanding what makes a good black and white photo Maybe just take a bunch of shots, make them all black and white, then have a look at them and think, okay, which ones of these look better? And it's just a process that the more you do that, the more you'll identify which types of images you prefer in black and white. And once you've identified that, taking the pictures in real time will be easier because first time you take black and white photos, you don't really know what works. It's only through doing it several times that you'll figure out, okay, contrasty images, things with light and dark differentials, uh, you know, things that are too busy maybe don't stand out, silhouettes are good, light sources, shadows. It's all about contrast because that's what black and white is. Black and white allows you more freedom to go deeper on the contrast, which in, makes the image bolder. Because if an image isn't, hasn't done any contrast, it doesn't jump out at you more. The more contrast, the more you're like, oh, what's that? It pops out. So practice, but Practice makes perfect. The more you do it, the more you'll figure out what exactly you're looking for with a black and white shot. Okay, well, that was a big episode this week. Black and white photography, all the Red Dead photo modes and a bit of question and answers. I hope that was useful. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it, if there was anything I missed or anything that in Red Dead that I haven't covered. Uh, I think I covered everything, but mate, you know, there's always a chance I might have missed something. Again, I hope these are useful, these um, tutorials, guides, whatever you want to call them. I just want to make it easier for people to understand how everything works so they can take better pictures and just enjoy photo modes more. If you want to send me any questions for the next episode, uh, details will be on the screen. Um, tweet me, uh, photog, at photog underscore gamer. Or you can add something in the comments and I'll get back to you. But yeah, for now, that is Red Dead Redemption 2's photo mode covered. And uh, yeah. Have a good day, everyone. Enjoy yourself. This is Photography Gamer signing off. Thank you.